I bought one of these Tesla coil high voltage speakers and what it is is on this side over here it's just a uh, one of these Tesla coils I've got another video on these and yeah it just uh, creates a high voltage output up here and um, yeah that's that's standard for a Tesla coil but uh, on this side there's an audio input and then that is that modulates the output of this and you can supposedly hear music uh, as the ionization of the air changes pitch so anyway uh, I assembled this and uh, it's you know just pretty much like my other Tesla coil with the exception of the uh, audio modulation over here okay so uh, let's kind of put this through its paces and see what it'll do for us a construction note when I made this uh, my other Tesla coil has the primary coil it's built into the circuit board down here and it's just got a couple of, of uh, printed coils underneath the main coil and this one has this uh, loopy wire that goes around the outside and I will say this has been an extreme challenge because even the slightest change in this coil causes the uh, main coil output to vary drastically and maybe that's part of the secret of modulating the audio I don't know but in any event uh, this thing has been a real challenge both the shape of it so like where you begin the coil and where you end the coil how far away it is from the main coil and yeah so the, the primary has been uh, a real headache and of course the instructions are in Chinese I did have them translated using uh, online translators and uh, it didn't help much at all so I tried to follow their picture and the shape of the coil but uh, I have found that even varying this by a centimeter or getting a little bit closer or farther away uh, makes a huge difference on whether it works uh, even creates a, a, a plasma and uh, also if you get this too close to the primary coil or secondary coil rather the secondary coil will start to arc over and you'll get little burn spots in the insulation so anyway this, uh, this part of it has been really a challenge Let's start off using it as a regular Tesla coil. Those two lights in the back, one of them should not be lit. Um, it tells you that the uh, that there's a bad match between the uh, primary and secondary, the impedance of it. And so I don't know. Can you see? It's barely it's barely arcing right there at the tip. Yeah, you can barely see the plasma. Maybe if I kill some of the lights. There we go, it's a little easier to see. Okay, so there it's about 14 and a half volts. You can see when I get the uh, neon bulb near the, near the uh, coil tip the impedance matching is better. You can also see as I move down the coil. Ow! Neon bulbs getting hot. Um, the impedance is matching is better. Okay. I don't know if you can hear it. But there's a very little hissing coming from the uh, coming from the uh, end of the uh, coil. Let me put the microphone as close as I dare and see if you can hear that. Probably not. Okay, yeah, it's not loud. Now let's try uh, connecting our uh, audio source and see if we can get some music out of this. This is our setup. This is the old phone I'm going to be using to, to play the music to our Tesla coil speaker and yes I'm using an old phone because if something goes wrong and the, and the uh, high voltage backs down the line it's going to kill this device and then off over here I've got my old power supply uh, this thing's supposed to run between I think it said 9 and 30 volts or something which yeah, I don't believe that because somewhere around 12 volts it starts breaking down internally but okay I've got my old power supply off the side over here 
because again I don't want to use my new power supply and risk uh, the high voltage backing down the wires and killing it. Well, I think this is attempt number 10 or 20, but my last attempt was uh, I had the phone too close to this device and the phone locked up. It also created its own voice file, whatever, of kind of scratchiness. So, okay, let's uh, fire this thing up and try one more time. And get the arc running. There we go. We shouldn't have to do that. I don't know if you can hear. Oops, it just stopped. Okay, yeah, uh, getting interference again from this device. And once again, it is totally locked up. Okay. Well, um, let's uh, make another make, uh, make another run at it. Wow, this really messed up the phone. Um, I had to power cycle it, and and it came back with a lot of weird errors for a while. I thought the uh, touch screen was fried. So here's a warning to you. Uh, you know, don't use a new phone or don't use something you value when you're trying to drive this thing. Okay, let's give it another shot and see what we uh, we get out of it. Okay, I've got the arc running. I don't know if you can see it over here. But there it is. And let's start this. Yeah, for me, that's just barely audible. Lessons learned from this. Well, um, yeah, first of all, do not use a, uh, a good phone when you're running an experiment like this or any kind of a good power source because um, it really scrambled the phone a few times while I was making this video. And uh, there was one time I thought I'd completely lost it. It came back with a missing SD card message and the uh, touch screen wasn't working. So... Yeah, um, that was one lesson. Uh, the uh, the output on this, yeah, you heard it about as good as as I've ever gotten it. I've fussed a lot with this uh, the primary coil, and that makes a lot of difference. But you know, uh, it's just not uh, it's not like my other Tesla coil that has a very reliable primary, and uh, it produces a, you know a very reliable output. This thing, not so much. So. Yeah, I can't recommend this. I mean, uh, you heard it about as loud as, as I ever got it, and you're clearly not going to use this to play music at your next party. Okay, well, that was it. I uh, hope you found it useful and interesting in your Tesla and uh, home electronics experimentation.